And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mind 1090. Pete Gray here. Rock god Rick Maxa still in Cabo enjoying a day uh, down south. Uh, enjoying after the big Royal Star trip. He'll be back next Saturday with Tim Ekstrom from the Royal Star in the studio to talk about their phenomenal trip that they just experienced on the Royal Star. In the studio with me, Mr. Bill Varney, surf fishing expert. And wow, are we giving away a great prize one lucky caller today is going to win the custom Bill Varney Cousins Rod, which you can buy at various tackle Absolutely. stores. Absolutely. Right? You can get it from Fisherman's Landing all the way up to Hook, Line, and Sinker in Santa Barbara and tackle shops in between. In between. And, and they're specifically designed for Southern California sport fishing by Cousins and yourself. Absolutely. They're specifically designed for surf fishing in Southern California. Um, and you can certainly fish them in Mexico, too, and in other places. And, of course, it can cross over as a trout rod for you, too. Okay. But they were specifically designed, tested, um, put together, built right here in Southern California for Southern California surf fishing. Oh, wow. And really, really nice high-end rod that is is, is it'll blow your mind a- absolutely the highest end rod and, and the one thing about cousins is boy they really stand behind their yes. equipment a- out of the hundreds and hundreds that have been sold two have broken one of them what? You, can you believe that yeah right it's not a big number but can you believe somebody broke the rod and one of them was broken by a, a, a guy's wife in the car door and he said <laughs> called me and said bill you got to save my marriage <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean exactly? I'm really not that skilled. And he said, no, my fishing rod. So <laughs> we called up Cousins. We mailed this. With, so the thing about uh, two-piece rods is that the top and the bottom are specifically linked to one another. You can't just get any top and stick it in the bottom there. So he sent back the rods there. They rebuilt a brand-new upper portion, rewrapped it, uh, sanded it to make it the perfect shape to fit in there, shipped it back to him. Fifty dollars, Un- wow. unbelievable! Wow. What service? Yeah, Love we them. did a, basically a custom rod for them. Basically a custom rod. Wow, what great service! Yeah, that is fantastic. All right, hey, phones are packed up. They want to talk to you, Bill. So let's go to Santa Barbara. Speaking of Santa Barbara, and talk to Marco. Good morning, Marco. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Bill. Thanks for all that great info. My pleasure. Love to. Love to give it to you. Um, I got a quick story for you. Um, about how your show cost me 800 bucks. <laughs> I was uh, fishing up in Montecito, and I was fishing uh, this new lure, a ring hammer, and uh, the show had just changed over to football. It was 9.01. I hooked a big fish, turned on my GoPro, and I realized I got a big fish. Guys don't want to hear football talk. So I went to take my phone out of my pocket, and on film, I dropped it in the water. Oh, oh no. But that's okay, because I ended up with a 28-inch striper. Oh, my gosh. What a, what a trade-off. And then uh, about a half hour, followed it up with a 27-inch halibut. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's a, a day. day. <laughs> that's a day. So, Fantastic. So, yeah, so I was, uh, I, I, was, I was happy, very happy. It, it was one of those good news, bad news days. Exactly. <laughs> hey, and I got a question for you. I love trying new lures, and I really want to catch uh, a fish down here on a popper. Uh, what conditions, you know, halibut, sea bass, uh, striper, uh, what, what can I do to try to get one? I know they do it up north, but uh, what about Southern California? You know, you know pop, uh, poppers for sure would be traditionally used in the surf up north around Pacifica for striper fishing or then down toward uh, Magrino Beach, uh, Cabo San Lucas, San Jose del Cabo, and the East Cape. It doesn't mean that you can't use one here. I think it would be very, it's not impossible, but it would be probably unlikely to catch a, a, a halibut, a big halibut on a popper being on the surface because most of the time the baits we're using are suspended baits that are going to be about six to eight feet roughly below the surface. doesn't mean that it's not an impossibility. If I was to fish halibut, 
and, and hoping to catch a halibut with a popper, I'd go and fish at a peak high tide or a peak low tide where very little water is moving, and it gives them the opportunity to get out of the sand and come off the bottom to the surface. When it comes to stripers, when we look for stripers down in this area in Southern California, anywhere maybe south of uh, Guadalupe Beach or, or, or that area around San Luis Obispo, they are a transitory fish that move as many as 35 miles a day, if you can believe that. So the possibility of catching one on a popper is possible, but you have to find them. And, and you know, Gundy has talked about this several times over the years about looking for stripers. The biggest striper that I've seen caught in the surf was a 45-pound striper caught off Whoa. Newport Beach. Uh, I think it was three summers ago at 9 p.m. at night by my friend Brad Bear, who caught it on six-pound test. Unbelievable fish. But these fish are fish that will come up and they'll boil. You'll see in the daytime, you'll see them boiling on the surface like Bonito. Under birds, you want to cast into them with your popper and work the popper back to shore. With the war, colder water conditions coming, is it likely we're going to see more stripers this year? We have normally seen a, a, a relationship between water, fresh water from rains coming offshore through places like Bologna Creek, for example, or, or any of these estuaries all the way down to the Mexican border and out into the ocean and striper. So the more rain we have, the greater chance we have of larger numbers of them coming south. Are these stripers San Francisco Bay stripers that we're seeing down here? I would guess that they're from the Delta, yes, and then come out through the bay and then make their way south. Yeah, a lot like the salmon seasons that we have. Exactly, a lot like the salmon season. But unlike the salmon, they have a much larger ranging area, and they move at about 35 miles a day looking for forage. Oh, wow. Okay, very good. Hey, thanks for the report there, Marco. Appreciate the call from Santa Barbara. Let's stay north and talk to Hills in Ventura. Good morning, Hills. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. Hey, Hills. Hey, good morning, Pete and Bill. Um Hey, my report is we, we've been catching a lot of fish up here in Ventura, stripers and sea bass and even mm-hmm. corvina on the uh, the hard bait. And it's been excellent fishing, and Bill, all his information is spot on. Thank you. And uh, all these surfers are surprised they see these fish. And <laughs> they're not in very deep water, and pe- people should get in a surf fishing, man. I'm I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> now um, you, you sent me a picture of a, a huge sea bass. That one, that was caught on the in the surf. Yeah, that was really that was something else. How big was that fish, Hills? Uh, so thank you guys. I love your show. All right, I'm gonna uh, listen on uh, offline. All right, very uh, good. Thank Thanks you. a lot for the call I, this morning. I think this fish was well into the 30 pound range. Oh my gosh! You, you don't see a lot of big sea bass up here in the surf like that you don't see that many there 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 has been quite a few over the years and i don't know if they're incidentally caught but but caught in and i've seen up in the 20 pound range or so but not much bigger than that but but hills brought up a great point there in the last week i've received three fish reports from ventura county of uh, or well santa barbara and ventura of, of uh, juvenile white sea bass in the surf. There's quite a few up there right now. It's a really good sign, and, of course, that's a sign that that cooler water is coming back. They're probably following some squid to shore, and, and they're going to be there, so look for them. Wow, fun. Hey, 858 1090 A line open right now at 877-792-1090. Jeffrey in Rosarito. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, gentlemen. How's everything going? Excellent. Great. Thank you. I have a couple questions for you, Bill. I've been used to fishing in the rocks that I need to transition to the sand. What's the difference mainly in the type of fish that you get in the sand? And also, have you used the sand cra- the uh, tuna crabs in the past when they wash up? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, really. As a matter of fact, if you remember, several times we've seen some big tuna show up in the surf. Uh, the Huntington Beach lifeguards got one about five years ago, about a 40-pound yellowfin that was in there flopping in the surf. And then, of course, the, the biggest one of, of all time, the greatest story ever, is the gal in, uh, by Moon Shadows in, in uh, Malibu who heard this splashing below her deck and looked out, and there was a bluefin tuna, about a 20-pound bluefin tuna, slapping on the uh, sand. She ran down there in her Sunday clothes and pulled it up, and they took a picture and stuck it in Western Outdoor News. I've never yeah, seen crazy. anything like that. Um, but, you know, when making that transition from the rocks to the sand, here, here's a good clue for you when to do that and what to do. 
Surf fishing in the sand is particularly good in the summertime or any time where we go from about May 1st through about October 1st. But as the water cools, all surf fish, uh, or most of them at least, make their way to areas where they can hide and structure in the winter and get away from big surf. So they will congregate around and actually between the rocks in jetties, and that's a great place to surf fish in the winter. And I had always, as a kid grown up, I grew up in uh, Hermosa Beach. We'd go out on the Sapphire Jetty after they'd make it, which was right inside the barges, and I'd cast about a mile offshore and never get a bite. And every time I'd reel in, I'd get a fish right before I pulled my line out of the water. So after a little diving, I realized the fish are right in the rocks. The biggest surf fish are backed right into the rocks, and the best thing to do is to downsize to about a quarter ounce or an eighth ounce sliding sinker, very, very light sinker a short about 8-inch leader, uh, a number 2 gamagatsu split shot or a mosquito hook and put a bait on and uh, like a ghost shrimp or a worm and drop it right in front of the rocks, maybe a foot in front of the rocks, and allow the water to wash that in and out. And during the winter, that's where the big fish will be. They'll come right out and gobble that thing up. I'm telling you, be tight to your sinker. Never allow any slack. And when your rod begins to bend, because they won't nibble, they'll just grab it and take it inside the rocks, you reel down. Because if you don't do that right away, you'll have the rod. Yeah, good hint. Very, very good uh, technique there. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, here he is, Mr. Dave Sanson, your saltwater guide. And this fishdope.com report is sponsored in part by Gamakatsu Hooks, Japan's leading fish hook. Gamakatsu live bait hooks are the hooks that keep bait alive and the perfect bend that the bait swims harder and longer and What's going to happen? You're going to get bit. They also come with a super strong, solid one-piece ring that's very different than all the others, a one-piece super strong ring. Get Gamakatsu live bait hooks at your favorite tackle store. And here he is, your saltwater guy, Dave Hansen. What's up, Dave? Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. Sorry I missed you guys last week. I was delivering a boat to Cabo, and I couldn't get that sat phone to work. No problem. But, but hey... We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and that bluefin just keeps hanging out out there on the tanner because of that squid. The water, I was told yesterday, was 58 degrees out there, and there was still boats catching bluefin. So as long as that bait stays out there, we just need some good weather, guys. Be careful going out there on your smaller boats. I've heard some real horror stories lately. So, guys, that's a long ways to go on a small boat, so make sure you pay attention to that weather. Then on the coast... Like Mark Wish was kind of mentioning yesterday, here comes the squid. We haven't seen this for a couple of years. Things are getting back to normal. There's squid at right there off of Isers, between Isers and the oil platforms there. There's plenty of bait to be made. If you work hard on it and spend some time out there, there's a pretty good chance to get a sea bass or a yellowtail. Once again, it's all weather-based. you got to make sure you pay attention to this weather this time of year, guys. And then as you take that bait, if you get some of that squid, then you hit some of the local rocks up or down the coast from San Diego to Point Vincini. Any of those rocks in 80 to 120 feet of water are going to be holding that sand bass really good, and they love that squid this time of year. So there's plenty of stuff to catch still. The rockfish fishing is still good. Lots of the landings are showing really good rockfish, and we only got about three weeks left of that rock fishing, guys, and then they're going to close it for a couple months. So. If you want to get out there and get some rockfish, this is a good time of the year to do that also. And as far as lobster fishing goes, if it ever rains, and they say it's going to rain one day here in Southern California, that coastal lobster will start to crawl again, guys. They haven't gone anywhere. Quit telling everybody the lobsters are all gone. They're not gone. It's weather-related. We don't have any weather. We haven't had any weather in a long time here in Southern California. So just hang on. Everything will get back to normal here, and everything will be okay. Indeed. All right. And fishdope.com, Danny has all the scoop on that coastal sea bass and squid and, of course, that bite out on the tanner that just never seems to quit. And you can save 20 bucks on a new membership to fishdope.com right now by using the code HOOKUPNOW, lowercase, no space, for for $149 a year with that code. You can get 365 days of information from Dave Hansen. How much does it cost to go out for a day with Dave? To go with me for a day, I come with you on your boat and teach you how to use all your electronics and just show you. You might be doing everything right, but it's just nice to have someone show you that you are. I charge you guys $600 for the day for a 10-hour day to come out with you and dial you in. That's a pretty good deal, but with fishdope.com, you can get... 
Dave Hansen, 365 days a year for 149 bucks. How about that? That's a pretty good deal, and especially this time of year when there's not a lot of boats out there, Danny keeps a really good handle on what's going on. So you guys, if you're not Fish Dope members, go and get a Fish Dope account this year for Christmas, guys. It's just, you got to get one. Great idea. All right. How do we find you, Dave? You can give me a call at 949-374-0786, or you can look me up on the web at yoursaltwaterguide.com. All right. Thanks for that, and we will talk to you next week. All right, Pete. Kelly says hi, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, take care. Dan and Encinitas, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Dan. Hey, my God. Thanks for taking my, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, as far as surf fishing, for sure, just get out there. Because I, last year, this fish story, I was using bloodlines from a yellow fin, I call them in San Diego, and a 30 inch orange mouth corvina. Bombs away right there at Swami's in Encinitas. 30 inch. And, That's a beautiful fish. Yeah. And having said that, where's the, like, going with your own bait, where are the sand crabs? <laughs> <laughs> Follow the cold water. Um, you know, as this colder water fills back in again, you'll find more sand crabs. Traditionally in Southern California, after about October 1st, we don't see sand crabs. Most of them will go into hibernation. If if you really do want to find them in the winter, you'll find them adjacent to rock structures. So you'll find them next to uh, jetties, let's say, for example, right where the jetty rocks meet the sand, dig in that area. And another place that, more than any other place you could probably ever find them, is underneath piers and next to pier pilings because they will gang up against those piers where it's a bit warmer and there's a little bit more soft sand for them to hang out during the winter. And then once the water gets to about 60, degrees in Southern California, they'll come up to the surface. So I it, couldn't even find them in the summer this year. That's why I'm asking. Like, right, because my, my beach in Cardiff, they did the whole dredge thing, mm-hmm. and then I they haven't been back since. Well, first of all, that that never helps, of course. No. Um, but but besides the dredging, the the water has been so warm uh, for about two two and a half years now, and now it's beginning to cool down. That most of the sand crabs. I don't know if they literally moved or died off or weren't able to spawn, but that's why we had so few down south here. And and as that water cools off, which we've already seen now, it's getting in the high 50s, which is great. We're going to see those sand crabs come back. And when next spring comes, I guarantee you around the Fred Hall show, that's when you're going to start seeing them. And by the time May 1st comes, they're going to be everywhere. Yeah, I like that. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Randy in Costa Mesa, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Good morning, Pete and Bill. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you. Uh, good. Hey, I had a question regarding uh, rigging tackle and and line size and reel size. Um, you had mentioned six-pound mono. Do you go with any kind of backing with that, or is that just kind of general rule of thumb? Well, it's a general rule of thumb that I will use six-pound mono. Sometimes I'll drop down to, let's say, four-pound if I'm – corbina fishing but in general four to six pounds six pound probably 90 percent of the time on a spinning reel and i like to use a 2500 uh, size spinning reel so roughly anywhere from a 2000 to a 3000 size spinning reel shimano makes some great reels of the sedona the sienna um the pen battle reel is an excellent surf reel there's there's quite a few good reels for the surf there although don't spend a lot of money on a surf reel try to stay under a hundred dollars or so Um, And then I'll use monofilament on those, which will give me stretch. And then if I'm going to fish like a Lucky Craft or a Castmaster or a Crocodile, I may fish with uh, a braided line and maybe a very short top shot, like a four-foot top shot. You use fluorocarbon. Okay. Yes, I always use fluorocarbon. Every single rig that I put together, my leader material is six-pound fluorocarbon. and, And I use it for two reasons. One is it's invisible. At least that's what they tell us. And then the other is the fact that it's very abrasion resistant. And when fishing in the surf, you're rubbing against the sand and rocks and kelp and an occasional surfer. You need to be abrasion resistant to to survive. You bet. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. And when we come back, more of your phone calls, more good talking about surf fishing and more. More Let's Talk hook up right here on the Mighty Ten Night. Are you feeling that itch to get out on the water? Come fishing on the American Angler and reacquaint yourself with some familiar faces and make new friends. Captain owners Brian Kiyohara and Sam Patella take pride in every aspect of the American Angler operation, from their loyal and trusted crew to the sashimi-grade fresh fish you'll take home. It's easy to find a vacation that fits your schedule. We have everything from day and a half to 10-day trips and longer. Call me at the office. 
619-223-5414 or check us out at AmericanAnglersportFishing.com. We want you to become a part of the American Angler family. Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. It's time to get excited about fishing, and Point Loma Sport Fishing has everything you'll need. They offer half-day and three-quarter day trips daily, perfect for families and the novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips, targeting the best of seasonal catches. Visit their website at pointlomasportfishing.com where you can purchase tickets online and get more information on the trips available, or call 619-223-1627. Want to catch the yellowfin tuna of a lifetime but don't have weeks at a time to commit trying? Then check out Journeyman Sport Fishing in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Based in Nuevo Vallarta, Journeyman offers an angling dream come true. Outstanding world-class fishery, immaculately maintained and outfitted boat, ultra-limited competition at the rail, and a Journeyman crew that has the experience and passion to make your angling dreams reality. A two-and-one-half-day trip offers two full days of fishing from sunup to sundown and only requires four days of away from your other commitments. In the 2013 season, Journeyman landed dozens of yellowfin, over 200 pounds, and several over 300. Choose the trip that fits your schedule. Two and one half, three and one half, up to eight days of the ultimate fishing for giant yellowfin tuna. For complete details, check the web at journeymansportfishing.com or contact 619-571-1979. Journeyman Sport Fishing, where angling dreams become reality. If the fish are biting, I'm on my boat, rain or shine. Of course, I wear my life jacket. It's like wearing a seatbelt. Clip it on, grab my tackle box, and hit the water. Love California, boat California, save California. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. XFRS 1090 AM, Rosarito, Baja California. The best NFL coverage is right here. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty Tent 90. Uh, you just heard journeyman sport fishing and going fishing with Captain Russell O'Neill on that incredible 60-foot custom yacht down in Puerto Vallarta. What an opportunity for you. And we do have one spot left on our journeyman sport fishing two-and-a-half-day trip in January. Middle of January, you fly to Puerto Vallarta, you get on the boat, they pick you up at the airport, you fish for two-and-a-half days for cow tuna, uh, you fly home, or spend an extra day or two in beautiful Puerto Vallarta. Uh, great opportunity to go fishing with me. I'll be on the boat. And then in March, you have an opportunity to go on a three-and-a-half day on Journeyman. Uh, a couple spots left on that trip. One spot in January, if you want to go with me, go fishing for giant cow tuna on that beautiful custom multi-million dollar six-pack uh, it's not even a six-pack boat. It's a it's a it's an incredible custom yacht, Journeyman, and Captain Russell O'Neill, one of the greatest skippers uh, around down, especially one of the leaders down in in Puerto Vallarta too. So check out our website, hookup1090.com, and all of our trips are listed there. Now is the time to start thinking about and booking your trips, whether you want to go to Alaska with us or go down to uh, Puerto Vallarta with us or get on the East Cape. A couple opportunities to go down to East Cape or one of our long-range trips. Go check it out, hookup1090.com, check on our trips page, and jump on that trip with us. Let's go ahead and jump back into the phones, and let's talk to Doug in Montebello. Hi, Doug. 
Good morning, Doug. Come in, Doug. I guess we lost Doug. So let's go ahead and talk to Tom in Temecula. Hi, Tom. Morning, guys, uh, Pete and uh, Bill. Um, Bill, I've uh, just started to get involved with uh, surf fishing. I picked up a, a little travel rod from uh, Okuma, and it was seven foot, and uh, had some limited success in Hawaii and uh, uh, Hawaii, uh, Mexico from the surf. Um, a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, are recommending really long rods. Can you recommend a, a, a you know, a, a good travel rod that you know maybe I can get in a suitcase that's maybe a, an eight foot? I guess that's uh, more desirable than my little seven foot, although it seems to work. Um, and then my other question is, do you have a, a with all the lucky craft lures out there? Do you have a, a favorite color or pattern that you would recommend, kind of all around? Well, th- those are excellent questions. One is that you know there really is not any good travel rod for longer rod for surf fishing out there. Um, Okuma, there's a couple manufacturers who make a couple travel rods. I know G. Loomis makes a nice travel rod, right? But G. it's not really specific for surf fishing. Exactly, it'll and work. But it, it'll definitely work. Um, but one of the problems is just very, very difficult to make a high quality rod that's got maybe four ferrules in it. So that's very, very difficult for something that's going to have to have a lot of uh, parabolic bend to it. I've talked with Bill at Cousins mm-hmm. numerous times mm-hmm. about a travel rod because I love taking travel rods with me. And he said he was working on one, but I guess they haven't mastered it yet. I, I think he is working on one because I've talked to him about it yeah. numerous times because so many people have contacted me regarding it, including including myself. Currently, we can only break our rods down to about 46 uh, inches roughly. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something we're working on, but in order to get it perfected is really difficult. And, and as we talked about with the rod that was fixed, every every top and bottom, and in this case, maybe four sections are unique to that one specific rod. So it makes it more difficult and more expensive. And I think that's what they're worried about is it being so cost expensive, you know, and retail price in the market that it, it won't sell. So that's something we can we can hopefully work on. But, there, you know, there are two applications. One would be a long rod, maybe 12 to 14 feet, where you would fish for sharp and fish on the outside uh, a fish at night or maybe if you're down at in, in San Jose del Cabo or Cabo San Lucas I'll go up about 17 miles toward Taro Santos and, and fish Magrino Beach I'm going to fish a 12 foot rod up there I'm going to use 60 to 80 uh, pound braid and a 5,000 size reel that's a different different type of fishing than we'd have up here in Southern California bigger fish much bigger fish yeah uh, much bigger fish, and then down here, of course, we're going to use a eight, eight to nine foot light action rod, rated for about six pound test. Yeah, very good. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning, Kenny in Hawaiian Gardens. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning, guys. Hey, Bill. Love your book. Thank you, Kenny. Hey, um, I was born and raised here in Orange County, been fishing and surfing all these beaches you're talking about around here. Um, they really did a number on on uh, Crystal Cove down there with the vacationers and the restaurant and stuff. I haven't been there for a while, but kind of messed it up. Um, hey, you were talking about Santa Ana River uh, jetties. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I used to surf down there all the time, uh, do a lot of fishing. Have you ever heard of the halibut hole? Well, there's some, I mean, there's some unbelievable halibut fishing in there. Not only has there been good halibut fishing all, all along the years, all along the edges of uh, the uh, jetties there. You know, there's, what, seven, six or seven jetties in a row there, great fishing there. But up in the, the Santa Ana River itself, especially near in the past, where the um, overpasses for Pacific Coast Highway, I've seen some 18 to 24 pounders taken right out there. That's changed over the years because we've had so little rain that the sand has backed up in there, and there's very little water up there now. So we don't have as much of a tidal swing up in that area as we had in previous years. So once we get a good rain, it's going to blow that sand out of there, and we'll be back to normal because a lot of times the the uh, anchovy and um, smelt and even grunion will go up in that area and, and possibly spawn or just aggregate there, and those fish will go up at low tide, peak low tide, peak high tide, and feed there. All right, very good. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up for the first time all morning, 858-457-1090. Rich in Bradley, you're next up on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Rich. Hey, um, I'm a transplant to uh, southern Monterey County. I grew up fishing uh, the surf down in, in southern California. And I'm wondering, when you get to a little further north, are you targeting uh, 
different species and changing your casting angles and types of lures and maybe even help me get off on the right foot while I'm up here. You know, up there, we're really not making changes. I mean, all the way up the Oregon coast, we we have guys that send us reports every week. I just talked to a guy in Newport, Oregon, just the other day who fishes using the same techniques that we use. But what does change, as you said, is, is some of the fish. And one of the big changes that is, begins probably right about the middle of California would be the red tail surf perch taking over for the barred surf perch. So you'll find that as far as a change that's concerned. Um, but going back to the central coast area, so you're looking around Guadalupe and San Luis Obispo, Bo, San Simeon, some of the largest perch I've ever seen have been taken up in that area in the last two years because probably of this warmer weather. And, and one of the bait sellers up there that I know from, from childhood told me that he ran across a guy up in Guadalupe that caught a seven-pound barred surf perch. Seven pounds? Which would be about twice the state record if, if it was a record. Wow. So there are some big fish up in your neck of the woods. And I would stick to the same techniques. A lot of the guys in Monterey that I know are using the Lucky Craft lures to fish not only for, for striper but also for these big perch. And they're using rather than the 110 size, about a 70 millimeter size, about a about a, a half the size. So maybe about a three inch uh, hard bait is what they're using. So I try that up there, and I think you'll have some great luck. There you go, Bruce. Thank, th- thanks a lot for the call this morning, uh, Rich. Appreciate that. Bruce in Lemon Grove, you're next up. Good morning. Yeah, hey, good morning. Uh, Pete, first of all, yesterday's show, uh, very informative and uh, very useful. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. And, uh, uh, Bill, my, my question to you is um, how do you feel about laser minnows in the surf? I think laser minnows are, are going to work fine in the surf. I, any type of bait that you use in the surf for halibut fishing in particular that resembles fry in the surf you're going to have luck with. So I I think the reason that we've had so much luck with these lucky crafts over the past few years, there's been so many reports of them and big fish. As a matter of fact, the very first month in the calendar is the biggest halibut I've ever seen taken in the surf by Jonathan Madrano. Giant halibut. And that was in the south in Hermosa Beach. That was in Hermosa Beach and that is a that is a huge fish. And that was on on a Lucky Craft, and I think maybe the only reason we see more of those is just more people have tied those on and they're using those. If if we went back in time, we went back to the 50s and 60s and 70s, it would be crocodiles. So I, I think as far as baits are concerned, whatever is going to resemble what naturally occurs in the environment where you're fishing, that's going to work. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's go through the calendar. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. Let's go through this calendar. And I might add to uh, our friend Mike Lum. Uh, pointed out that we need to, uh, when you're looking for the uh, CCA California you need, and you're doing a Google search, you need to spell out Coastal Conservation Association to find it. You can always link it through my website or our website, hookup1090.com. You can link it through Bill's website, mm-hmm. fishandsurf.com. But, uh, yeah, ccacal.org is their, the website. But if you can't find it, Coastal Conservation Association, just do a search and you'll find it. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. So let's talk about the kind of that. Of course, we just talked about that. How big was that halibut in January? I think it was, four, if I remember correctly, it was over 40 inches. Wow. I mean, that's a big halibut that's from the surf. That's a big halibut surf. on the surf. And yeah. Big halibut anywhere. Absolutely. And, and Jonathan's story, great story about catching that fish was, you know, he's reeling in his lucky craft. He was in about three feet of water, and this thing came up and just blasted out of the water. And he said it was about the size of the, the, the splash is about the size of the hood of a car. Oh, I can believe it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big flat. Something fish. else. And of course, all the tides and everything, and tells you mm-hmm. when, uh, mm-hmm. what's going on. And it even has on the 21st of January the CCA drawing on Let's Talk Hookup. Absolutely. So, Shows every single month when the drawing is going to be on Let's yeah. Talk Hookup, the radio station, all that information. I, I think another great picture uh, in the calendar is Tracy Decker's picture, which was a beautiful. Uh, which would be March, and that would be oh, yeah, Tracy. Yeah, a beautiful Tracy. spot fin croaker. That is a beautiful croaker. And, you know, Tracy sent me several pictures for consideration, and I think I probably could have made a calendar just out of her out pictures. Out of her pictures. She yeah. had the most beautiful fish, a big corbina, spot fin croaker, absolutely beautiful stuff. And it, it, and as much as we complain about how fishing, or I don't know if we complain, but say that, oh, boy, back in the 50s fishing was this and that, it was so much better and all that, it's just as good today as it was back then. It all has to do with techniques and knowing where to go and what to do. All the fish are still there. They're just a little bit smarter now. Yeah, indeed. Of course, February, we passed February. That's a beautiful vermilion rockfish or red, it, huh? It sure is, and that was that 
fish was off of the Apollo back in the days when J.J. Garrison, our favorite oh, J. guy J. on Pete's show, was yeah. running the boat. Oh, that's so Love cool. Love him. And then we go to April, of course, to kick off a sea bass season. What a beautiful sea bass mm-hmm. Sea bass. Fog and balls of squid and sea bass. That's what yeah. brings us into, yeah. into a- April. April. Yeah, and then we go into May, and there's a nice south of the border surf fishing. That's picture, right. Huh? That's a picture from Magrino Beach, which is about 17 miles of of uh, north of uh, Cabo San Lucas, Los okay. Cabos. And the guy on the Pacific side. That's on the Pacific side, okay. which is an unusual and a different type of fishing than fishing on the um, uh, East Cape side, on the on the Bay side, and you have to be prepared for that. Um, the guide there, Wesley Bro, is a fantastic guide in Cabo San Lucas. You can reach him at Cabo Surfcaster on Facebook. Okay. And he'll put you in his brand new truck. He'll drive you up there. He's got all the equipment for you. And as you can tell by looking at the pictures, you you fish about 12 foot rods with 60 to 80 pound uh, Spectra and with five to 10 ounce Ranger style jigs. And looks like and he has a popper on there. He he's got a popper on that one. And many times we fish these these ranger jigs or something that you can cast a long distance, and the catches off the beach they're phenomenal. Dorado, yellowtail, uh, jack, uh, four hundred pound lemon shark. I it, it's just mind boggling. Pretty, pretty what's amazing. there? Really fun. That's cool. That sounds like fun. And you can tell he's a you can tell which one is the Baja guy. <laughs> that photo, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, then we go to June and uh, a really great uh, calico bass picture there. That's right. A great example of what has happened now by catch and release and these beautiful fish and all these great Southern California calico bass fishermen who catch and release these fish. It really shows us that you can catch five, eight, and maybe 10 pound calico bass as long as you let them go. They're right out there waiting for yeah. you. Yeah. And then uh, July, commemorating with uh, our buddy Rock Cod Rick Maxa and these two giant bluefin tuna that, that, I mean, will it ever be repeated this year? You know, I I don't think it will. And many people who've seen the picture who maybe aren't fishermen have asked me, you know, what foreign country is that from and who is this guy and and all that. It's just incredible. Ten miles off of San Diego. Right. To imagine (laughs) ten miles off of San Diego in a two-day period of time, yeah. getting two fish over 200 pounds. Un- unbelievable. Absolutely and we moved to August in a beautiful Dorado, Mahi Mahi. That was a beautiful Dorado taken right off of Mag Bay. And one thing about fishing off of Mag Bay, which is called the Ridge, and so many of our boats fish down there, uh, the sport fishing fleet fishes down there, is there are so many Dorado, they're a nuisance down there. If you're fishing for Wahoo or you're fishing for uh, Marlin. Like John Allen calls them vermin. Or he used vermin, to call them vermin, that's right. right? <laughs> the captain will say, reel them in. <laughs> Yeah. we got to get away from these things. They're everywhere. It's a beautiful fish. Yeah, beautiful fish. And then September, uh, uh, just a beautiful uh, uh, salmon fi- picture there, a Chinook salmon or King salmon. Exactly, a beautiful salmon picture. And that was one thing that we decided to do with the calendar to change it around a bit. It was primarily all long-range fishing. And we said, you know, we will really want to look at all the fish in the Pacific, from the Arctic down to the uh, tropics. And so we were able to get a shot each month of the fish that would spawn in those normal months. Yeah, very cool. And then we go move to October, turning the page here to October, and uh, look what's there. What will, is that? Will thing? it be? What Pete, is that? Is thing? it Pete's prediction? Like, <laughs> yeah. Remember last year, Pete predicted we'd have albacore, and there was an albacore caught. So you were actually accurate okay. that way. I'm sticking with it. And everybody's <laughs> jumping on my bandwagon this year. Did you hear that? You I know, have them all. Ju- the they're all taking going, credit. Yeah, they're all saying. This is going to be the year 2017. We're going to see albacore. That's right. And I would I, I would have to admit that I would believe that too. If you look historically at El Nino periods followed by cooler water, we have good albacore years. So let's cross our fingers. Yeah, and I can assure you, the guy pictured in this Captain Pat Cavanaugh, uh, what a great guy and a great captain. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll be on it. He will sure. be on it. Yeah, no doubt about it. November tournament month, right? That's and right. That's appropriate picture there. November is tournament month, and that would be the Los Cabos Tuna Tournament by, brought on by Western Outdoor News. Yeah. And when they sent us this picture as as a chance to get in the calendar, it was such a beautiful picture of boats leaving the harbor and the shotgun start. And for all of us who've been down there, it brings back so many yeah. fantastic memories of warm Cabo mornings and, oh, and the oh, excitement yeah. on the water that we just love it. For sure. And Gary Graham uh, mm-hmm. shot that, and Gary yeah, was with us Gary. on our trip uh, with Sport Fishing Association uh, yesterday and the day before down there, uh, shooting photos and doing articles and such like that. Gary is such an amazing guy. He's an amazing yeah. guy and a real emissary for us oh, uh, here. And a phenomenal, phenomenal. 
photographer, photographer, too. photographer too. Phenomenal photographer, super knowledgeable. Um, I've talked to him many times about fishing inside of Mag Bay in the surf. He's given me some great ideas, some great fly fishing information, and he knows Baja top to bottom, and he's a fantastic writer. He's recently won an award uh, for, for his writing and so forth, so photography, writing, knowledge, Friendship, wonderful lucky guy. Lucky to have a guy lucky. like Gary around in mm-hmm. Southern California, sure. for sure. And then who's that guy in December? Oh, my in God, December? Miss, Mr. December. Yeah, how about that? And that fish was amazing. I caught that on a fly rod, on an eight-weight fly rod. Oh, my gosh. For bonefish. And uh, it was about a, I'm going to call it about a 12 to 15-pound giant trevally, and it was in about six inches of water. Oh, my gosh. And this thing ate the fly about Five feet from the end of the tip. I saw him coming, <laughs> and I just, the uh, guide kept on saying, strip, 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 keep stripping, keep stripping. He ate it, like, right in front of us. Oh, my gosh. And then took off, and it was an unbelievable battle. And this, of course, is on Christmas Island, which is one of the most wonderful places on Earth. You can see the birds, the terns flying in the background, and there are actually terns nesting right behind us in this picture. Oh, my gosh. And dive-bombing me <laughs> as I'm fighting this fish uh, on there. It was, it's a great memory. And, uh, and again, uh, having that AFCO face mask that you see on mm-hmm, there, well, mm-hmm. that saves you in the tropics. I, I bet it does, For not sure. only from the sun, but the bugs and every, yeah, everything else. No doubt about it. What a great calendar. And then, of well, course, thank you. your sponsors in the back. Back here, a lot of great sponsors you have in here. Uh, uh, Powley Valley Collision, Fisherman's Landing Tackle, Jig Stop, uh, Tom Waters, is great mm-hmm. illustrator. Oh, my gosh, fantastic. fantastic. The best. Guy, and, uh, cousins and Sumo, Pacific Edge, of course, Mark, Fish Tacos, and AFCO, a full page from AFCO, and those great guys and all the great sponsors. I'm sure the calendar wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for those sponsors, right? That's exactly right. It, yeah. it sure wouldn't be. Yeah, and so that is it. That's the 2017 Sport Fishing Tide calendar. It's got all the tides in it and uh, some great photos. And again, you can get it at your website, right? Mm-hmm. You can get it at surffishtackle.com, but really go to your ta- local Fish tackle shop. Well, there's fishthesurf.com and then also our little tackle store on there where, where the calendar is, which is surfish. Tackle.com. Oh, surfish tackle. Okay. So we, either one of those two, but certainly go to any one of your tackle shops from Santa Barbara to San Diego, all the Turners, you'll be able to pick it up there. And I'd really like to just take just a second to thank Tom Waters for working so diligently with me and Sherry, his wife, to get the calendar put together without his help. Wouldn't have happened. Tom's a master. He is the master artist. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And he knows way more than this stuff than I would ever know. And and thank God for Tom. He freed up some of my fishing time. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Sam and Irvine, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my question for Bill is I got his book. Great book. Thank hey, you. Um, you know, down here in South Orange County, I'll see boats. Well, it hasn't been for a while, but a couple of years when I was surf fishing uh, down in uh, around the kelp beds. Um, I w- there would be boats parked when the white sea bass were hitting on the other side of the kelp. What kind of rig would you think about for getting a bait to the other side and trying to drag a white sea bass through that kelp? Well, you know, that, that's definitely a braid application, first of all. If you're going to be in that kelp and you've got, got mono, you're going to have stretch central and you're going to get hung up. So, And another thing is you're going to have to get out to that area where those white sea bass are. That doesn't mean that they don't come in and feed. And I have had numerous, I would say half a dozen photographs using Lucky Crafts of anywhere up to about 22-pound white sea bass right in the surf there at Carlsbad, San Alejo, um, the end of the ramp at Solana Beach, those areas there. So it doesn't mean that if you mm-hmm. don't use those, you know, if you don't use those baits, you're not going to catch the fish. If you do use them, you're going to have a chance to get them. Um, they may be on the edge of the kelp line, but they may be coming inside to feed too. And all of the biggest fish that I've seen there, the white sea bass, have all been right at sunrise. There you go. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Gosh, that, that would be so exciting to catch oh my sea gosh. bass from the surf. Un- unbelievably exciting. It always that brings, and the big striper. brings back images of Delmarsh for me. That's right. At Variety Kelp down in Baja and his his card, which I still have sitting on my desk, of him holding a, a stack of sea bass over his shoulder that he caught from the surf down there. Absolutely. And the one thing about Delmarsh is well before I knew Delmarsh and I would travel as a teenager down to Baja to surf and, and to fish, there'd be these stickers. Do you know Delmarsh? Delmarsh here? Del- I, I knew Everywhere. I knew who this guy was. Yeah. And on every post, everything, there was there was a sticker there and boy was he a legend and what a fantastic guy i have so many good memories of him at the fred hall show and other times very friendly wonderful person indeed and really if, miss you, him. if you go to ever go to maui you're going to see a lot of dana landing market stickers all oh my god this. yeah <laughs> That's good. just a little hint there <laughs> hey <laughs> keith in san diego just about 30 seconds left keith 
Good morning, Keith. Is it this is it Ken? Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, uh, hey, real quick, just talking about the uh, Lucky Craft. Uh, what's what's the best uh, Power Pro uh, four carbon combination for throwing those Lucky Crafts? The one ten. Well, whenever you're fishing a Lucky Craft or a hard bait like that, first of all, and, and this was a question earlier, what what is my favorite color? I don't have a specific favorite color because I'm always trying to match the bait to what occurs naturally there. So if there's a lot of smelt, I'm looking for a smelt pattern. If there's a grunion, grunion pattern, anchovy, sardine, so on and so forth. So that's the first thing is match them up with that. The second is it's a great way. Uh, most of the people I know that are top halibut fishermen fish mono. Um, with the Lucky Craft, but that doesn't mean that you, there's plenty of people who fish the braided line with it, and you want to have a short top shot. You don't really need much stretch. And here is a great tip, the big tip when it comes to fishing those lures, and the biggest mistake I see. You want to cast those lures out, and because they're suspension baits, it takes them, a, uh, like if you just begin to reel them in, half of the distance to come to shore to get the right depth. What you want to do is you want to cast out, you want to reel up your slack so you're tight to your bait, and then you want to pull your rod to the side just like you're going through a snagging motion, and that will drive the bait down to that suspended area and then slowly retrieve it to shore. And the closer you get to shore, the slower you reel. And that's really the secret of using this. So the 110 size is the size you want? The 110 is the most common size, 110 and 140, and those are a great size to use. All right, very good. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. And when we come back, we're going to wrap things up, see who wins that Cousins Bill Varney rod. Tell you about next week more Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. This is Pete Gray to tell you about one of my favorite places to fish in the world. It's Whaler's Cove Lodge in Angoon, Alaska. For several years now, we've been hosting groups at Whaler's Cove, and this is certainly one trip I do not miss. Each year, the Powers family makes great improvements to the lodge that make this great lodge even better. New rooms, new boats, new fish processing facilities, new outdoor kitchen. The list goes on and on. As for fishing, the calm waters around Whaler's Cove are 100 miles from any large town, so you will enjoy wilderness adventure without the crowds. Whaler's Cove Lodge has some of the best salt and freshwater fishing in Alaska, and there's no need for a bumpy boat ride for hours. You can find productive fishing for salmon, halibut, and rockfish just 10 minutes from the lodge. Here's the deal. The word is out on Whaler's Cove, so you want to go? Book soon. WhalersCoveLodge.com or call 800-423-3123. WhalersCoveLodge.com for the Alaska fishing experience of a lifetime. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro is home to L.A.'s finest open party fleet, including overnights on the Freedom, Catalina Freelance on the Pursuit, half-day trips on the Monte Carlo, and three-quarter day trips on the Native Sun. Plus, you can charter the Ultra, Spectra, and True Line. There is always plenty of free parking and a fully stocked tackle store. Take advantage of the Wednesday specials on the Pursuit in Monte Carlo, and kids fish free with a paid adult on the afternoon half-day. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. Call 310-832-8304 or book online at 22ndstreet.com. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range Voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. <laughs> You're listening to the home of the Aztec. What the clam dunk? That's what I'm talking about. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back. Let's talk hookup on the mighty 1090. Congratulations. Who was that big winner? Mike and Rosemead, you win that Bill Varney Cousins Rod. Thanks to Bill and the gang at Cousins, and thanks to you, Bill, for uh, hanging out and 
talk and surf fishing with us. Absolutely right? love to do it. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. Now, somebody wants the new calendar. Mm-hmm. It's available at tackle stores all the way up and down the coast. All the way up and down the coast. Yeah. All the Turners Outdoorsmen stop by there, pip, pick up a calendar before they're gone because they really are going quickly. They're beautiful calendars. You'll be able to use it all year long. It's got all the dates and all the information, all the tides, everything you need to do to be yeah. a better fisherman. Fantastic. And, of course, your website? Our website is fishthesurf.com. Go ahead and take a look at it. We have all kinds of information about surf fishing. You can learn all kinds of things, great articles. You can read my articles every month in Western Outdoor News, Fish Taco Chronicles. If you're on the East Coast, I write for Florida Sportsman there. You can read stuff there, too. All right, fantastic. Keep up the great work, Bill, and thank you for taking the time to come in this morning. And thank you for listening this weekend. Another great weekend of shows next Saturday and Sunday. Kept. And Tim Ekstrom from the Royal Star being here with Rock Cod Rick talking about their great trip and all the great fishing on the Royal Star next Saturday. Then next Sunday, Captains Bruce Smith and Bob Verger from The Fortune will be in here talking fishing. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next week right back here on the Mighty 1090.